What's going on, man? I'm Logan. Welcome to my home kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make steak Diane. This is a somewhat of a traditional recipe. It involves pan searing a piece of meat in a pan and then making a sauce in the same pan that you seared that piece of meat in. So you get nice caramelized flavor from pan searing the steak and then he get all this flavor for making the sauce in the same pan, you know what I'm saying? Nice hit of umami too, it has very, very minimal ingredients. You know, I like to put mushrooms in mine, shallot, garlic, herbs, Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, we have heavy cream, beef stock, and a nice hit of bourbon. Traditionally speaking, you could buy beef tenderloin, 30 bucks a pound, that's kind of not necessarily something I want to spend that much money on. So sirloin is obviously a very, very good cut of meat, and plus it's like a quarter of the price, right? So can't beat that. So if you put a damp rag or a paper towel underneath your cutting board, it'll keep it from slipping around. So when we have raw meat and other ingredients to prep, you definitely want to start with produce first and then kind of just move your way forward up to the meat. That avoids any kind of cross-contamination. So community mushrooms are going to be first. You can rinse these really quickly under cold running water if you want to and then dry them off. Or you could use a pastry brush and just brush that dirt off. <laughs> Got some Siamese twins going on. This cardboard container is perfectly acceptable to toss in your compost. I mean, it even says recyclable right on the side of it. So definitely be kind of smart with that. Be a responsible adult. So with the mushrooms, use a very, very sharp knife. Always a sharp knife. I like to slice off a little bit of it and then stand up the mushrooms and then it gives it a flat spot to kind of rest on on the cutting board. That way you don't slip and cut your fingers. And then keep your fingertips curled in just like that. And if you let your knife ride right on that front knuckle, you have a lot less likelihood of cutting yourself. It's kind of an awkward feeling, but you'll get used to it. I love bench scrapers too. They make it super easy to scoop up prepped ingredients. Keep all your prepped ingredients in different bowls because they're gonna be cooked at different times, you know? So the shallot. Cut off both ends. You also need to have a bowl to keep your vegetable scraps in. Keeps your work area nice and clean and tidy, right? The cleaner your kitchen is, the more effective it's also gonna be, and the better your food is gonna taste. So when you're cutting up onions or shallots, it's very important to have a sharp knife. As you're cutting the onion, if you have a sharper knife, it'll cut really clean through the food. If you're using a dull knife, then it'll be more rigid and you're gonna get those vapors more likely to be, you know, go splattered into your eyes, which is what makes you tear up when you're cutting onions. So I have one clove of garlic, I'm just gonna give it a rough chop. Cut that root end off first. Fresh herbs, I have Rosemary, sage, and thyme, one sprig of each. Get them into a pile, kind of pinch them together with your fingers, and run your knife through it a couple times. You really don't need to chop herbs too terribly much. I mean, they have a lot of flavorful oils in them, those essential oils, and the more you chop them, the more you're extracting those oils, and their oils are gonna get stuck to the cutting board, where I want all that flavor to be in this beautiful pan sauce that we're making, not the cutting board, you know? We're eating the steak in the sauce, not the cutting board. That's all you really need to do. Three, four passes, maybe. That's it. About a pound's worth of sirloin here. The sirloin's really nice, it has a nice amount of marbling to it. They're choice grade. There's not a whole lot of silver skin or connective tissue in these, you know, fat cap on it, right? So you could either pound these flat with a meat mallet. I just kind of like to Cut it in half, you know, almost like you're gonna be butterflying it, but I'm cutting it all the way through. Try to keep them somewhat uniform in thickness. About like that. Yeah, take your time. This is why it's important to have a very sharp knife. It's have a really good amount of marbling in them. You know, pretty good for a choice grade. There's not a whole lot of silver skin or connective tissue in these, so they're nice. They're nice cut. Well, now we season both sides of the sirloin, salt, pepper. These are room temperature. They pan through the best when they're room temperature. I'm just gonna pan through really quickly too. And then a really smoking hot pan and have a nice, beautiful caramelized crust on it, which is just great flavor, you know? So this throws together really, really quickly. So you need to have everything pre-measured out, pre-cut before you even start cooking. This is our mise en place, which basically just means to put in place. It's very efficient, very effective when you have all your ingredients pre-cut, pre-measured, 
ready to rip. So when you start cooking, it's just really arms reach, just dump in and cook and go, you know what I mean? It's amazing how good food can actually taste when you treat it with respect. Large saute pan with a nice thick bottom on it. This is obviously a one pan meal. You need a pan with a lot of surface area in it. You want one that has a nice thick bottom on it. That way it retains its heat. Drop in the meat away from you so you don't splatter yourself with hot oil. Pat the other side dry. Patting it dry is gonna help us get a good caramelized crust on it, which is a good flavor, yeah? So we'll cook them just so they get a little bit of caramelization on the side of it. They're gonna get finished the rest of the way through in the sauce. This is one of those pieces of meat that I like to have cooked all the way through when I'm serving it with a sauce like this. Uh, you could do a medium rare, rare, whatever you wanna do with that, right? Throw in about a tablespoon of butter, mushrooms all in. Rosemary, sage, and thyme is a very robust herb, so you could go ahead and throw that in now. Keeping this over medium high heat too as I'm cooking it, yeah? You don't want to season your mushrooms too early. You want to wait until they release their liquid and that liquid evaporates and then they start to caramelize. And that's when you season with salt and pepper, right? As the mushrooms are cooking down, I'm scraping the caramelized bits from the beef on the bottom of that pan. That's fond. I love that smell. It has a nice earthy smell to it. I love mushrooms and the herbs. So good. Man. I love that smell. It makes me so happy. When the mushrooms do start to caramelize, then you hit them with a little bit of salt, some black pepper, a little bit more butter. <laughs> this recipe uses a uh, copious amount of butter. Throw in your shallots. I like to hit the shallots with a little bit of salt too because they have a really good amount of flavor in them and the salt pulls that flavor out. Not, not a lot of salt though, just enough, just enough. If you're seasoning in stages, like I always say, then your kind of seasoned throughout the cooking process, you end up with a fully bodied, fully flavored dish at the end, you know what I mean? If you wait to salt until the very end, you really just end up with salty tasting food. It makes a big difference, seasoning in stages as opposed to seasoning at the very end of the cooking process. Hope that makes sense. We just want to cook the shallots until they start to turn translucent and not looking to caramelize them. And obviously you want to taste as you cook too. If everything tastes good as you're cooking it, and the end product is gonna taste good, naturally. This is one of my favorite dishes to make just because of the simplicity of it and how it's just freaking good it is. So if there's other one pan recipes that you wanna see how to make, then let me know in the comments, right? I'm smelling the garlic to make sure that it has the rawness cooked off of it. It only takes about 30 seconds or so to do that. Now we take the bourbon, you let it simmer off long enough that alcohol is gonna get cooked off. You don't need to ignite it, it's not a necessary thing. Once the alcohol is all cooked off like this, and you don't smell the alcohol, then go in with the beef stock, that's one cup. Then half of a cup of heavy cream. And then add the Worcestershire. Hold off on adding the Dijon because I like to add the Dijon at the very end. Really, all you need to do is bring this up to a simmer and then just let the sauce reduce until it becomes a nice thick consistency that you want it to be. You could have it thick or as thin as you want it. Really, it's just a personal preference at that point. Mmm, it smells good. It's more than likely gonna taste good. Man, that bourbon really, really pulls that thing together. You want something acidic when you're making any kind of sauce like this. That could be wine, that could be vinegar, that could be lemon juice, orange juice, you know, beer, or some sort of like a bourbon or a whiskey. You know what I mean? Something acidic to really just cut through the fat and it helps just balance all the flavors out.
simple ingredients and obviously nothing got compromised. Doesn't get any better than that. Mm.